stop. I'm trying so hard to use big words. Hoodies are classy. Hoodies are iconic. Hoodies are basic. But just because you have a hoodie doesn't mean that you have to be too. And it definitely doesn't mean that I have to be. So today, I'm going to take my black hoodie and I'm going to customize the sleeves with a Tengu design that I made. Tengu are a type of yokai, which is a name describing supernatural beings in Japanese folklore. Their name and appearance is thought to be originally borrowed from the Taiangu, a dog-like demon with a sharp beak and upright posture in Chinese folklore. The first written mention of Tengu in 720 depicted it as a heavenly dog or shooting star that precedes military uprising. It's theorized later depictions of the Tengu were influenced by the Hindu deity Garuda. The two also began to share similar narrative elements. Garuda being the enemy of Naga, which were half snake, half human deities, and Tengu being the adversary of dragons. However, their behavior and representation differed greatly. Garuda being friendly and Tengu being categorized as disruptive demons and harbingers of war. Step one. So this is the Tengu design that I made for this hoodie. This is the second in the four piece collection I'm doing as part of a collab with Criminal Damage. So I decided to add white flames to bring the design together with the Hanya design that I did in the last video. If you wanna watch me making that piece, you can just click the link in the card above. I chose teal, gray, and white because the colors work well on the black and pop, but are still simple enough as a color palette to fit in anybody's wardrobe. When I finish designing, I always make mock-ups of my designs just so I can see if it's coming together in real life, which is important because as a creative, the images in your brain will always lie to you. If you guys are interested in how I make my design mock-ups, let me know in the comments. Speaking of which, so in my previous videos, I've had a few questions about technique and like how I paint and how I do things. And this was one of the questions that stood out most. Travis Garth said, I really want to try something like this, but I'm really not a good artist when it comes to painting. Any tips on how to get steady and consistent line work with a paintbrush? It's fast, confident strokes. <laughs> As soon as you put your brush down on the paper or on whatever surface you're using, like if you do not fabric, you want to immediately go in the direction that you're going in. So that a lot of people, what they do is they'll hesitate, they'll put it down and then they'll start moving very carefully because they're trying to do a careful line. What you want to do is just be very deliberate with how you're putting the paint on the fabric. Visualize your hand moving in the direction that it needs to move in. And as soon as the paint runs out, take it off immediately. Go back in, do the same thing. Conventional wisdom would tell you to like move slow if you really wanted to get smooth marks, but you have to move with a certain amount of speed if that's what you want. So I hope that helped. Step two. So I slipped my design between pieces of paper so I could print it out and stick them together and now I'm ready to trace out my design. The best way to do this on black fabric is to use a white paint pen. This way you get a smooth line that you can still see but I don't have a paint pen so I decided to use a thin brush and some white fabric paint. Once the outline was drawn I began to cut the template so I could draw the lines that are separated by color. Even though it might look like it there's actually not that much detail in this design which means that it's pretty easy to draw out the lines with the brush which is great because I was actually painting this at 2 a.m and I was tired. <laughs> I need sleep, boy. Later on in the 13th century, the appearance of Tengu shifted again, this time to be more anthropomorphic in form. Their beaks began to be replaced with long noses, typical of the Tengus recognizable today. This change was connected to their common association with Japanese mountain hermits known as Yamabushi. Tengu were for a long time depicted as spirits that corrupted and brought out the worst in Buddhists. Attacking monks, possessing women to seduce holy men and robbing temples. This is analogous to the role of demons in the Abrahamic religions. However, later, there were distinguishments made between good and bad Tengu, establishing them as primarily protectors of Buddhists that were susceptible to falling to a demon path. This idea, once again, was lacking like inspiration for the concept of fallen angels. Later stories of Tengu show them taking human form to provide aid to monasteries and as vigilant protectors of forests, requiring placation in the form of mochi and fish to prevent kidnapping and haunting from malicious spirits. There are three. So now I'm painting in the color. Because the fabric is black, it's gonna take a lot of layers of paint to build up the color. So I started with the white flames since they were at the top and I was gonna work my way around. It took about three layers of paint to build up the white and the remaining colors took two layers. The paint I'm using is Pebio fabric paint. You can find the link in the description. It comes in a wide range of colors. However, the tones are quite limited. So I had to mix them. I wanted two different tones of gray. So I had to mix in some white paint and I used the natural gray for the rest. The difficulty in mixing acrylic paint is that it dries very quickly in open air. So you have to move very fast. Also, it can be hard to get the exact color that you already mixed twice, so it's better to mix more than you'll actually need. I actually didn't mix enough, so I struggled to get the paint exactly the same color for both sides. However, after a bit of testing, I got pretty close. Once all the steps were completed, I simply repeated all of them on the other sleeve. So I believe the creative should always support each other, and it's important to me that I use my platform to do that. So this week, I want to highlight independent jewelry artist Christopher Kites. Christopher is a self-taught, Chicago-based jewelry designer who takes vintage toys, combines them with clear resin to make unique accessories. Trapping objects from youth in a clear cage, preserving them for the world to see, no matter who you are, 
you'll find a piece from him that speaks to you. Make sure to follow Christopher on Instagram and take a look at his work on imakefakeclothes.com. Link in the bio. Step four. So now it's time to bring this design to life because right now it just looks like a blue ass stain. I'm gonna cut the remainder of the template out so I can get the outline of the face down. I'm using a fine liner pen to draw in the lines. I'll go over it again with a paintbrush. When I have my outline, it's just a matter of painting in the light and the shadow. I want the light to come from the top of the design. So all of the shadows will be at the bottom of the face and the beads. I'm using a relatively large amount of shadows to reflect the more sinister side of the Tengu. It also works to blend the design into the color of the hoodie itself. Because there's so much paint on the hoodie already, this part of the process is much more simple. Especially when painting the line work. Since the surface is so much more smooth than the fabric, I can do the lines with little trouble. Now the black is all down, all I need to do is add the highlights onto the face in white, onto the beads and paint the teeth and the eyes. Tengu are extremely popular to this day and appear in a wide range of contemporary media. They appear in anime such as the mask worn by Orodaka in Demon Slayer, Kakashi's perfect Susanoo in Naruto and literally Usopp's face. You can also see the influence in video games like Shift Tree from Pokemon and the Tweet Air from Super Mario Bros. Tengu references can also be seen in popular Western media such as Scooby Doo and Power Rangers. Tengu is without a doubt one of the most recognizable mythical creatures from Japanese mythology, behind only the dragon and the phoenix, and has even received its own emoji on iOS. If you're interested in watching an in depth analysis of Tengu in popular media, I've linked down in the description a video by Ganji Gumba Media that dives deep into the topic. Step 5 The last step is to protect the design. The first thing I need to do is heat it. You can use an iron with a cloth over it but in my experience I find that this actually tends to peel off some of the design so I choose to use a heat gun. I just go over it inch by inch making circular motions every few seconds and moving around. You know it's done when the paint is no longer sticky to the touch. After about 24 hours I add a layer of acrylic finisher. This provides an extra layer of protection when washing the design. In my opinion you should always hand wash your piece. This is because it's art and you should treat it with care. However you can wash this in the machine on a low heat. And this is the finished custom. I think it's quite a wearable design. The print itself is quite large however it works out to be quite subtle in the end because it's just on the sleeves if you enjoyed this video subscribe and i'll see you later bye